Hi everyone, it's Lisa and Luna from Don't Run With Scissors back with another Technique Tuesday. I have had so many questions on how I've made my backgrounds with Whip Spackle that I decided it was time to probably do a quick video. I have a couple of cards that I'm creating uh, for upcoming challenges and whatnot, so I am going to do a couple at a time here and I'm going to start with my stencil background. So I picked uh, this one here with the, the diagonals, these uh, big circles, and this one with the flowers. So because you never know how much whip spackle is, too much whip spackle, always have a second stencil set up with paper uh, on the side because it to waste the stuff after you've make the color, it, it's depressing. So I always have extras to go. So the two cards I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to put on black. So I have two four and a half by six uh, paper size cut out here. And I have it on some craft paper behind it. So I'm just going to tape these down. I'm not going to go overly crazy with it. These stencils that I'm working with here are uh, much larger than the normal one. So uh, I am adding my craft sheet here and uh, a lot of extra space around me. So then I'm going to take my stencils and I'm going to line it up so I'm only going to be making a mess really on one side here. I don't have to clean it up too, too much. And this really is a very, very simple technique to do. It adds a lot of pop to your cards. And it's fun. It's fun making colors. This one I want to try to make sure my lines are straight. What do they say? It's always prep work. Prep work is what makes it sticky. Prep time is the worst. So here's the normal size stencil that we're all used to using. So once the whip spackle does dry, it can um, curl your paper a little bit. So the longer you can leave it taped down to dry, the better. Um, I'm going to race through one of these so you'll actually see what happens because I do want to add some glitter. So I have my three sheets prepped. I have, I have a craft mat, but because of how big these actually are, normally if I'm working it's really just this size and I can do my mixing on here, but because I've got so much going on, I have two acrylic mats here. I have Whip Spackle. It's from Faber-Castell. It's awesome. Love it. Love it. And it goes a long, long way. Now you can use this, uh, it's like frosting. You can use it straight and it dries white, uh, opaque, and you can add glitter to it or you can add color to it. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. I love using the gelatos and mixing. You can also do some alcohol ink, which I'm going to show and let's get rolling. A couple of tools you want to have on hand. Some are very fancy, some are not. Uh, Dreamweaver does have a nice embossing paste spreader. So for those of you that have ever used embossing paste, uh, this is along the same lines. So this just drags it along. Spatulas are always good. Uh, I've, I've grown up and stopped using my grandmother's cake frosting one, so I've got this one. And sometimes uh, your old hotel keys, also very handy to have. So I'm going to get going here. And I'm going to start by putting some of this on my acrylic mat. And I think we'll start with the color blue. So on the gelatos, uh, they're like little lipsticks, little chapsticks. You can just uh, stick it out a little, an eighth of an inch. Look at me sounding all mathy. Uh, and then all you're going to do is crunch it in. And it's going to mold in with your paste and tint it. So you're making a palette. Put that aside. You could add more if you want it darker. But you really want to make sure that those colors really crunch in. Sorry if I'm jiggling you at home. Okay. See, looks like frosting, feels like frosting, doesn't taste like frosting. Okay. 
All right, so we're gonna get started. Do you wanna do my polka dot one first? This is the one I'm focusing on today. So like I said, it's helpful to have that hotel key card around or that uh, big embossing thing. I'm gonna put my blob right on my card and I'm just going to smear. Now, because I'm going to kind of multi-layer the colors, I'm not going all the way down. So if you just made this color for this one card, you can now see how much I left over. So I'm gonna scooch on over. I'm gonna do my second card very carefully. And if you leave a smear, kind of like here, that's fine. No big deal, because you can ombre it. So see, still got a ton. So now I'm going to do this one. Um, because of the stencil I'm gonna be using, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna leave a little bit in the center. I'm not going straight across. This is only gonna be a two color one. Okay. So there it is. Now see, this is what I still have left over. Uh, not happy about that, so I probably will go find another stencil to play with. That's a lot. And I'm going to stick this here on a scrap piece of paper. Hopefully I can think of something to do with it before it dries. All right, put that aside. So also good to have a paper towel or baby wipe on hand so you can wipe your tools down. You don't have to mix your colors or cross contaminate. Not like it's a big deal. Uh, after you're done with the whip spackle, please, please, please wash your stencils. Uh, you will want to do that. Let's keep going. I not take as much as I did last time. You just never know. And this time I'm going to do purple. Actually, I'm going to do green because I only need a little bit of purple. So I'm going to do green here. And chunk that down. And mix. It's very fun you get to make your own colors, mix colors. Maybe on the purple. Do I have purple? I don't. See, it looks like frosting. It's awesome. So I'm going to actually go back to my Dreamweaver stencil uh, because I wanted green on this one. Come back over. Quick drop. And we're going to smear. Okay, put that aside. Come back over. Green down. Oh, I might get in there. And then, last but not least, we'll come back over here. So, I have many backgrounds that are just dried, waiting for a home. So just keep them around when you do this, but you just don't want to make sure you're not wasting. That's the worst. Okay. So that's all that's left from there. Not a terrible run. Not bad. I'll clean that off. And clean this off. Quick smear. And last but not least, we'll do the purple. Based on what I have left, I'm not going to use that much. So we'll just Yay. Okay. Awesome. Quick. 
All right, and we're off. I don't need it. And we'll just finish the bottom here. Looks like ice cream. So you want to make sure all of your layers are colored where you want them. That line is a big old mess. And that's what dyes are for. So you can hide that. Okay. So we are done with the whip spackle. Like I said, if you have anything um, that needs to be washed, you want to get that into uh, something quickly because the stuff will dry. Um, doesn't take, a, it's just hot water and some soap, no big deal. And we're gonna come on down to my memory box one. I'm going to lift, uh, peel this tape off. Now, like I said, I, um, they, they do need to dry, but because of what I wanna do with this one, I need to get the stencil up real quick. Blue painter's tape, this is from Scotch. I'm popping my stencil up, hopefully it's not making a huge mess underneath here. Let's just do this. Come on up. And there you have it. Here's my background. Get this off. So what I wanna do here is I wanna add some glitter because that will stick at this time. So I have some Elizabeth Craft Design Warm Diamond Glitter. It's an ultra fine. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this on here, like so. Give it a little shake around. And there's your background. And it's nice and sparkly. It's very pretty. Um, and you can do all sorts of fun things with them. You can make a mess with your glitter. So essentially what this is going to be, it's going to be a background for a card that I'm going to make. I do need it to dry. I just picked up a Penny Black cat stamp or a cat die, which is so super cute. It's got little kitties on it. I did die cut it, so here's the piece. I haven't even pulled it apart yet. Let's get the little key cats out and the little tails. And once this dries, I'm going to try to figure out what I want to do with the dye. If I want to color it in or leave my kitty cats white. Or if I want to color in any part here. And that's what's going to happen next. I might want to mat it and then put it down in the middle. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I did leave the middle open because I've got a couple little ideas that I want to do. But that is what's going to happen there. So eventually when things are dry, you can put them together. This is the same thing. I did whip spackle with orange yellow, another orangey red, um, and then I put the glitter over it, which is why it sparkles. And uh, that's how I've been making these backgrounds. So thanks for tuning in. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Whip spackle is crazy fun. It's almost the same as embossing paste. It's lighter, it dries faster. Um, and I've just had a ton of fun with it. I make snowflakes with it in the winter with a handmade dye. Um, so there you have it. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next week.